So don't tell me you ain't got it or you can't do something Yeah, everybody's spitting but they ain't saying nothing I'm just trying to make a difference, give you something to think about I ain't worried about a status or some goddamn clout If you see me in the streets, don't be afraid to shout them But I'm out Yo, 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 yo What's up? What's good with all my bull lifers out there, man? So, today was the official season opening for the Chicago Bulls versus the Charlotte Hornets. So, I'm just going to talk about it really quickly, but I have a few questions that have just been on my mind. And that's really the, 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 the real premise for this video today. But without further ado, let's hop right into the show. So, first and foremost, watching this game, man, I can't lie. Like, I actually saw a lot of pretty decent things out of like certain players. Corey Marketing, I thought that he came out and he definitely showed up. Lori Marketing did a lot of what I wasn't expecting just based on what how he performed during the preseason. He was lacking that aggression. He wasn't really asserting himself on the offensive end. And you look at what he did tonight, he came out and he looked the total opposite in comparison to what he did then in the preseason. So like Lori Markin had dropped what 35 points and had 17 rebounds. Lori Markin was very effective in the low post. Like he most of his damage came in like transition buckets and a lot of it was like turnaround jumpers in the low post and like just getting a lot of those easy buckets on the inside. That's really where his bread and butter was tonight. And I'm really glad to see that he's learned to hone his game in that area as well as opposed to just being mainly an outside shooter. So Lloyd Marketing, he definitely did his thing out there with 35 and 17 rebounds. Balance. He killed it. Also had other players chip in like Kobe White, the rookie out of North Carolina. Kobe White, he actually chipped in and had himself a nice game with uh, 17 points coming off of the bench. I thought that he was super assertive out there on the offensive end in transition, especially like that dude definitely pushes the pace. He makes us a faster team and he gets pretty much, uh, he, he gets guys, he forces guys to get involved on the offensive end, not necessarily in the assist column, although he did have seven tonight, but at the same time, Kobe White misses a lot of easy reads. I think that Kobe White, he, so he he thinks about scoring before he thinks about passing. Yet and still, like I said, he did have seven assists. So, you know, he, he was passing the ball, but that number is skewed just because there were a few times when Kobe White missed a man down low that was wide open just to take his own shot. So, I mean, uh, but I'm pretty sure that he'll get better in that aspect. But um, you look at uh, other key contributors tonight, like uh, Thad Young. I'm really glad to see that the veteran Thad Young is finding his, you know, he, he's finding his way on this young Bulls team and finding out what he can do to really be effective. He ended the night with 17 points and he also chipped in, what, three rebounds and a steal. So, like, he, he was that young. He was out there and I, there was a few times in the game where I noticed that some guys were sagging off from him at the three-point line because looking at how he shot from there in the rec or in the preseason like i understand why guys were kind of sagging off from him from deep but tonight he made them pay that young legit was on his he was on his game tonight from the three-point line let me see where he went uh he shot three for five as a matter of fact for 60 percent so he went crazy out there, so he was a key contributor. Uh, you gotta talk about Wendell Carter Jr. with his uh, 12 points. He grabbed five offensive boards. He had a block out there that was actually a key block that gave us a major spark. Chris Dunn, <laughs> the kid Chris Dunn actually chipped in like 11 points, had four steals. He was out there killing it. Like, I really don't have anything negative to say about Chris Dunn, about his performance tonight. Outside of, you know, on the stat sheet, it shows that he has zero turnovers, but yet and still, Chris Dunn took some ill advised shots that actually could be counted as turnovers if you ask me because they turn into points for the opposition on the other side but yet yeah, and still Chris Dunn 
overall had himself a nice game. Now, where tonight actually hurt us was Zach Levine. Zach Levine getting in foul trouble early on is what I really is what I think really crippled us in terms of really being able to um, just punched him in the mouth in terms of scoring the ball and and just you know taking control of this game. Not to mention the fact that our defense was so lackluster. Like we couldn't, man, we 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 couldn't guard a chair. Like that that's how bad our defense was on the perimeter because they was coming down making transition threes, wide open picking pop threes. They they were getting whatever they wanted at the perimeter. If the Bulls were to contain the perimeter, we would have definitely won this game. But those dudes scored, I believe, around like some like 60 plus points from the three point line alone. So that's clearly where we got killed. But I mean, I don't think that this is something that we necessarily have to worry about when it comes to Charlotte, at least. Because looking at how they shot tonight, those dudes were legit like on fire. And that's not something that you can expect from them all season. Because, man, for them to shoot or for them to garner over 60% of their points from the three-point line alone, I definitely don't expect that on a nightly basis. So I think that the Bulls... They just, they just call uh, uh, an inspired Charlotte Hornets team. This is the uh, the, the opener for, uh, for for both teams. So, I mean, they wanted it more, I guess. I believe they wanted it more. But yet and still, I believe that the Chicago Bulls are a better team overall. Like I said earlier, though, I think those early fouls with Zach Levine really hurt his play. I think that really stopped him from getting in a rhythm and being able to, you know, really... Uh, just make his mark on this game. And I really think that that's what kind of like hurt us in the long run. But yeah, and still Charlotte pulled out the win and that's mainly what matters. I mean, I don't know. I'm not really going to hold it, hold it against them too much, but uh, they definitely need to wake up on that perimeter defense because that's where they got punched in the mouth. That's the reason that they lost this game tonight, and that can't happen again. That absolutely can't happen again. We all know where the NBA is moving in terms of the three-point shot being the most prominent shot in the league. So it, it's just common sense, basically, to ramp up your, ramp up your defense outside of the three-point line. <sighs> the Bulls got shot tonight. I don't expect the Charlotte Hornets to be better than us during the duration of the season, when the season ends or anything like that. I really don't expect them to be a playoff in playoff contention in comparison to us. I think that we actually do have a shot, but I don't know, tonight, I don't know, that's pretty hard to say. But yeah, and still, whatever, man. <laughs> but moving on to the next topic, now getting into the nitty gritty of the topics that I really want to discuss. The second topic outside of the game recap of tonight's game is should the Bulls commit to Otto Porter Jr.? Now, the reason that I ask this is because come next year, come the year after next, there will be some key free agents in the market. The likes of Giannis Antetokounmpo, Paul George can opt out of his deal with the uh, LA Clippers should things go wrong there. Knock on wood, hopefully they do. <laughs> For our sake in Chicago. But I'm just saying like, the. the Otto Porter Jr. has the option this year to opt out of that 26 or 27 million that he's owed for this year. Now, obviously the reason that he would want to do that is if he has a really nice year like he, you know, was set to do just this past year when he came over here for us during those last 15 games. Now, if that were that were to happen, you can bet your bottom dollar that Otto Porter Jr. is going to opt out of that, you know, that last year of his contract because obviously this is probably the last time that he can get the most money of his career. So I'm pretty sure he's going to be seeking, uh, you know, four plus year deal or something like that to where he can get the most money, right? Now, 
seeing that in the next coming couple of years, next year even, if Giannis is on the market, Paul George and the likes of those guys, should we basically give up most of our cap space for the likes of Otto Porter Jr.? And this is all predicated on how he plays this year, right? So if Otto Porter Jr. like comes out and he continues his stellar play, should he do that? Do you guys think that it would be a good idea to re-sign him or to just let him walk? In my opinion, it all depends on how the Bulls are looking. So if this year we were, if we are to win, like, say, close to like 40 games or 40 plus, I definitely don't think that we should re-sign out of port. And the only reason I say that is because if we do, I think a lot of that will be contributed to the play of our already two cornerstone pieces in Zach Levine and Lloyd Mark. If we are to win 40 plus games, it'll be because of those two players. Not saying that Otto Porter won't have you know a key role in that. I'm pretty sure he will because he is a key component in this team right now, but he can't do it by himself. So that will mean that Lloyd Marketing and Zach Levine will have taken a nice leap in their game. And I think that's the only thing that we're missing in terms of enticing a legitimate like star free agent to come to this Chicago Bulls team. I know that a lot of us here in Chicago have said in the past that free agents aren't coming here because of, you know, the front office, guard packs and everything like that. But truth be told, man, it's not about that. I really don't think it's about that. If you look at what I believe was what 2012, 2013 when LeBron and you know, D. Wade, Chris Bosch, and all of them were talking about teaming up. They were actually considering Chicago. You look at uh, Carmelo Anthony in 2014. He legit was going to come to Chicago. You know, if New York wasn't his hometown, he would have played in Chicago that year. Thank God we dodged that bullet. But yeah, and still, you know what I'm saying? Like Chicago is a free agent destination. This is one of the most prominent cities in America. So with that being said, I don't think it's an issue of like the front office or anything like that. It's a talent issue. And if this team were to showcase that they actually have some spunk and that they have the potential to, you know, make it to the playoffs, I think that's all that we need to entice a top free agent, a top tier free agent to come to this team. And the best suited for that in my opinion, is Giannis Antetokounmpo. And if you look at some of the reports that have just come out just recently about Giannis talking about um, if the team doesn't fare well this upcoming season, then it's going to make it a lot more difficult for him to sign that extension, right? It's going to make it a lot more difficult for him to sign that extension with the Milwaukee Bucks in the coming years. So that lets you know right there that Giannis is looking to like go elsewhere if things don't go right in Milwaukee. We have the potential to sign a top tier free agent and that's the reason that I don't think it would be smart for us to re-sign out of Porter Jr. But it also depends on how much he's asking because if we can keep Otto Porter Jr. and still acquire a Giannis or a Paul George or somebody of that ilk, then obviously, cool, I definitely want to keep Otto. He's definitely one of those players in the league that will contribute. He will have he will be a net positive to our team in every aspect. So I definitely want to keep Otto. But if he's asking for some absorbent amount of money, then sayonara. Because if we were to win close to 40 or 40 plus games, I think we definitely have a chance to garner one of those top tier free agents, man. Legit. 
Life J. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that that that's just my whole thinking on that. You know, on on that topic, man. Uh, I I didn't make I didn't mean to make this a too too long of a video, but that's just a question that was brewing in my mind, just because I don't hear a whole lot of people talking about it. So that's just something that you know I wanted to put out there, and I wanted to get you guys' opinion on that. So uh, just let me know what you think about it in the in the, in the comment box below, and pretty much, man, that's. That's, that's pretty much it, man. That's all that I have for you guys today. So if you want to connect with me on social media, man, get up with me at Radical underscore creator. That's Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget to check out the pod with me and my man Marcus. That's Bulls Podcast. That's YouTube. I'll put the link in the description. And also you can subscribe over here, over here, wherever it may be. But until next time, man, y'all get up with your boy. Holla. Peace, love.